Well, go on, guys. It's your boy Jack, aka the Balding Refat, coming at you today's video, which is treating a pond with potassium permanganate, what it treats, and how to treat your pond as well without killing any ear fish. So, let's go. Okay, so for those of you that are new to the channel, hello, my name is Jack. I am indeed the Balding Refat, or should I say, bald now. I specialize in tropical cold water pond and marine fish. Today's video is treating a pod with potassium permanganate, explaining the different mix ratios for treating water, uh, for treating fish as well, uh, and also for treating an aquarium. Because potassium permanganate isn't just a pond treatment. You can use it on aquariums, you can use it on saltwater aquariums, tropical aquariums, cold water aquariums. You name it, you can use it. And if you're returning people, welcome back. And I'm glad you're still with me. Now, today's video is a technical one. Hence, all of my notes that I've made on air. And it's double sided as well. And I wrote in my neatest English that I possibly could. Now, potassium permanganate is this stuff. So the brand that I'm using is uh, Kasuri. The reason that we're using potassium permanganate is you guys never actually seen the video because it was it was too hard to actually put on video but we rehomed some koi the chap reached out to us and said look they are in a bad way they're gonna need some serious effort to save them but by all means you can give it a try we tried it with chloramine tea we were about to use potassium permanganate on them and unfortunately they didn't last longer than two hours after the chloramine tea treatment they were sort of too far gone now the pod that we've got here let me spin you around is the pod that they were in this pod keeps crashing its cycle. There's a lot of bad bacteria in here and stuff like that. Um, we got it cycled, we put some goldfish in here uh, and they just perish due to the amount of bad bacteria in here. Which is why I actually want to do a potassium treatment on here. Now, potassium permanganate, uh, it will stain your clothing. Bear with me. It will stain your clothing. Um, it will stain your skin as well. If you do get it on your skin, do not fear. Uh, it will naturally come off your skin within 48 hours. Uh, you can, like I said earlier, you can use it to treat fish, uh, you can use it to treat uh, water, and you can also use it to treat uh, tanks as well. If you are gonna be treating fish, the exact ratio, um, I've seen some people talk about like half a teaspoon, a full teaspoon, the exact ratio is always on the back of the packet, however, what I would always personally do is grab yourself a proper set of scales so you can weigh it out properly so you're not going to overdose your fish on the potassium permanganate because it can lead to them dying pretty, pretty quickly. Now you want to use 0 0.6 grams per 6 litres of water and you need to be uber, uber precise with using this which is why it gets such a bad name in the industry. Um, basically all you want to do is get however much water you need so for example if you were doing uh i don't know 18 liters of water you're going to need uh 1.8 grams of potassium permanganate you put your water in your tub so for example you put your water in your tub you then add in your 1.8 grams of potassium permanganate give it a damn good mix in there as well you get your fish in a net take it out of your water and you rest it in there for five minutes maximum Different fish, i.e. like a scaleless fish, are going to um, be more susceptible to coming up with any issues with potassium permanganate. So do be very, very careful um, and always do your research on whatever fish you're doing. For something like a chigoi or a sankey or a shawa or a shusu or something like that, literally leave them in there for a maximum of five minutes. If you notice your fish going floppy or going on its side or anything like that, take it out of the potassium permanganate dip, put it in a separate tub that's full of water to swill it round and then put it back in your pond and keep it in the net just so you can make sure that it's doing okay. If you need to, get some oxygen underneath it to go through its gills. But that's only, Lee, that's only ever really if you've overdosed on your potassium permanganate. Now, I don't mean to scare monger people because it is a really simple thing to use as long as you go off the correct dosage measurements, you won't have any issues. Now, to treat water, what you want to do is what we're doing now. So remove all of your filtration off there because the PP, or your potassium permanganate, the PP will destroy all forms of good and bad bacteria as well. What we're going to be doing on here 
is little or no light so once we've put it in and we've got we've got the, the pp in the water we're going to shut off all the lights in there for a mat for a minimum of four hours because once the pp has been in your water for four hours it's then going to start to naturally take itself out of the water column because it becomes inactive after four hours worth of usage what we're going to be doing is doing 0 0.5 grams per uh, 380 litres of water um, so in here there's two and a half thousand litres so we've got eight, uh, four grams of potassium permanganate we're going to be putting into this tub with water what happens is when you put the potassium permanganate in your water your water is going to go a pink slash dark purple <coughs> PP will, will um, bear with me because I've got the exact terminology on the back of here, it will oxidise <clears throat> any form of life form that's within the water, so your good bacteria, your bad bacteria, any, any sort of food, any detritus that's in your pond and it'll start to go brown, that's when you know that it's working. Do not worry about the colour change because like I say it would eventually come out of the water. Now if you have got any sorts of parasites in your water or on your fish pp will treat trichondia costia um chilondella skin flukes gill flukes and also light ulcers as well if you are treating a fish and it's got a light ulcer on it where the ulcer or the growth that it's got in it for example will turn like a, a brown kind of color but that's just because it's oxidizing on the wound and killing off the bad bacteria don't worry about it it's completely normal completely fine um you can run a course of treatment on here um again if you're doing fish or water but you need to leave it two or three days from the last time that you've done it and only do it a maximum of five times as well a lot of information on here but in the video description down below all this is going to be explained in complete bullet points and my inbox on social media is always open to help anybody out now enough said about that let's actually get down to the method because we've already gone through the methodology of it so first off let's get some water in here and then we're going to add in like i say the four grams of potassium permanganate okay so there's four grams of potassium permanganate in here and there's 20 liters of water in here so all we want to do now is literally tip it in like so and then get ourselves a little stirrer and just mix that through it is a lovely kind of purple in hue now we have gone absolutely bang on with our measurements on here but because we're treating the uh the filters, uh, well, the, the filter media, the sponges. Uh, we're also going to be tipping in the lava rock that was in here as well. Uh, there's a couple of nets in here. There's also a spawning brush in the bottom as well, because in essence, what we're doing with this is using it as a uh, like a disinfectant, if you like, to remove all forms of sort of bad bacteria. So we want to make sure that we're having a fresh, clean start on here. So what we'll do now is to save splashing PP everywhere. We'll grab these. Uh, the lava rock and then we'll tip that in there are you right to grab that for me mate or do you want me to grab it no. the lava rock yeah. and just tip it in the water because obviously the water's going to the, uh, the water's got um yeah just just literally tip it in tip it yeah yeah because the water's obviously going to splash up and what we don't want to do is get the water to splash up whilst it's full of potassium permanganate so with lava rock being our choice of filter media with it being highly porous, obviously it's going to have so much bacteria in it, good and bad. But like I say, we just want that fresh start where we can always go back in, scoop all this out afterwards. Um, and like I say, start again. But like I say, it's one of them. We, we didn't need to get the measurement spot on, but I wanted to because it's on video for you guys. And if you guys are treating your own ponds at home and stuff obviously you now know the exact measurements and how to do it but like i say this purple once it's in the water will eventually go like a proper murky sort of brown like that but all this in a moment is going to get fully oxidized by this potassium permanganate that we've just put in there you go you can already see it in there now 
where the crystals have formed on the bottom. But again, we'll just dip that in, making sure that we've got every bit of the potassium in there. What we'll do now is we'll just turn the pump on, which is this one down here. The reason why we want to turn the pump on, again, all the, inter in, uh, all the internal hoses that are on here and stuff like that, we want to make sure that it's blowing around the whole of the uh, filtration system. So again, as you can see, that water running through clear now, it eventually, it'll move its way around the, uh, the pod. <coughs> it will go brown. And then, like I say, after four hours, then it'll, it'll naturally start clearing itself up and eventually your water will go crystal clear. If you have ever overdosed um, your pond, and if you're doing this whilst you've got fish in there, always keep some hydrogen peroxide on site because if you've got hydrogen peroxide in there, for this, I think we need roughly about 62, 63 grams of hydrogen peroxide. You can tip that in and immediately it'll deactivate any PP that's in your water and your water will go back to being a complete crystal clear colour. But that's our method of sterilising this pond and getting it completely back to normal. Potassium permanganate gets a really, really bad name in the fish industry. Uh, some people love it, some people hate it. It's Marmite for me. I personally love it because it works so well. Uh, it's sort of like an antibiotic. It's not a cure-all by any means or anything like that. But if you've got some slight ailments in any of your fish or anything like that, PP is definitely the way to go. Just make sure you do your research online like I did before I first started doing it, watching tons and tons of videos, reading tons and tons of research papers about potassium permanganates, the benefits to it, the negatives to it as well. But let me know in the comment section down below if you've used potassium permanganate before, what you think of it. Uh, let me know how you got on with it as well. That'll be great. But this pod now, within four hours, will be good to go. Uh, everything will be dead in it and I'll be back to being a fresh water source in there as well. Uh, and then we can get back to installing the filter boxes on here. Um, and then we can go through on how we're going to be cycling an aqua um, aquarium, cycling a pond, getting it ready to put some fish in. So make sure you are subscribed along. Uh, follow me on social media for more behind the scenes sneak peeks. Facebook and Twitter is at the Balding Reefer. Instagram is slightly different. That's at the dot balding dot reefer. But as ever, Stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, people, stay happy. Balding Reefer, out.